America is home to 33 million small businesses, the beating heart of communities across the country. And proof that the American dream is still alive. This is a show about those dreamers and doers and the communities they serve. Their real life stories. Their struggles and successes. Their grit, determination, and passion. And the people who fight to keep their American dream alive. I'm Alfredo Ortiz. I'm Elaine Parker. And it's time for another episode of Main Street Matters. America's small business megaphone. Welcome to another episode of Main Street Matters, America's small business megaphone. I'm Elaine Parker, the president of the Job Creators Network Foundation. And I'm Alfredo Ortiz, CEO of Job Creators Network. And you can subscribe to the show at Salem Podcast Network or wherever you get your podcasts from. Today, we're very excited. We're joined by Charlie Gasparino. Charlie's a senior correspondent at Fox Business Network. He provides on-air reporting throughout the business day, covering the latest news involving major events impacting finance, the economy, and politics. Throughout his tenure with the network, Charlie has been credited with being at the forefront of a number of breaking news stories in politics and finance. He's also the author of the soon-to-be-released new book, Go Woke, Go Broke, the inside story of the radicalization of corporate America. Can't wait to hear about that. Charlie, welcome to Main Street Matters. Thanks for having me. And by the way, Job Creators Network, where Bernie Marcus and, and, and Alfredo uh, have cameos in the book. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> Well, um, uh, Charlie, I, I'm dying to know what your analysis of the presidential race is at this point, um, you know, with everything that's happened. Um, listen, I, I still think it's going to be close. Um, I mean, obviously, Donald Trump's got the Republican nomination locked up. I don't think Biden's going to bow out. And I think if it was anybody but Trump, he probably would he probably would bow out. I think that they feel pretty confident. And, and by the way, the Democrats don't have a strong bench. I mean, Gavin Newsom, talk all you want about him. I mean, I mean, all you have to do is run on California and, you know, half the country is going to more than half the country will hate it. Um, Gretchen Whitmer, untested. Uh, uh, Josh Shapiro, again, doesn't have a national profile. Right. I mean, and Michelle Obama, once she starts opening her mouth and she's actually said she's not running now. But, you know, she sounds, you know, you know, she, she seems good until you start hearing her. But, but, but I think Char Charlie Hitler also said he wasn't going to invade the other countries. So <laughs> say that again. I said Hitler also said he wasn't going to invade the oh. other countries. Yeah, no, I know. But uh, but so what you got is you, you really do. He's really their best shot. And, the, and and by the way, they've lined up the best candidate that he could be. And it's 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 Donald Trump for all the baggage that he brings to the table. Um, that said, here's where it gets, I think, really funky for the Democratic Party. You literally have to tell you really are telling the American people they have to vote for a guy, take a leap of faith and vote for a guy who is so demonstrably addled from a uh, from a sort of, uh, from, you know, just just mentally addled. I mean, it, it really is sad. I mean, you're actually telling him to take that leap. And um, I, even as crazy as Trump is, and you know, we're going to be hearing a lot more about January 6th, obviously. We're going to be hearing a lot more about you know, shooting bleach into your arm to, to cure COVID. I mean, they're going to come out and come out with everything. But as, 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 as much bag as Trump has, think about the leap of faith you have you have to vote for Joe Biden. He is just, I mean, just, he's not a good president. I mean, we right. know that on, on the merits, right? But then you throw on top of that, he really is mentally deficient at this point. Right. And maybe even physically. Um, I, I think that's a really tough sell, man. You know, when I see video of him, even just a year ago, and then two years ago, three years ago, you can just see the deterioration of him every year and how much worse he is. What, just real quick before um, Alfredo jumps in, um, what do you think Trump's winning message is and what do you think Biden's winning message is? Well, I mean, I, I, you know, it, it could be a race to the bottom 
I mean, listen, I don't if, if Trump was smart, I think, you know, just and I'm not Carl Rove. What do I know? I'm just a simple country reporter. Um, I, I say you, you focus on the economy, the wall. You, you don't go off on tangents about, you know, 2020 being a rigged election and all this stupid stuff. You know, you, you keep the crazy town to a minimum, which you won't. Uh, but that's how Trump should win. Uh, if you're Biden, you really do focus specifically and harshly on Trump, the persona, because his persona scores very low with, with majority of the American people. And, you know, as a bridge too far, you know, he is too nuts. Do you really want the chaos that he brought? And, you know, when, you know, and, and all you have to do is replay clips of 2020, of all this stuff, replays tweets, you know, going after people, weird stuff. And, you know, because he, he does he does engage in some weird things. And so, you know, again, I, I think the, the, these these two candidates are tailor made for each other because they're just both so bad. And they're the only one that could beat the other one. I mean, as candidates. Listen, if you ask me for my my opinion on policy, of course, Trump is, you know, policies are better. I mean, you know, less government, theoretically, although he's spent like crazy. Um you know, uh, he would close the border, which, you know, I'm for. He would r- ramp back immigration or at least make it a, a policy that should allow people that we need in the country to perform certain tasks, not just, you know, we don't, we're not just the caretaker of the world, you know, right. which was never the case. By the way, my, my grandparents got, came here from Italy with no money, but they needed, they needed cheap labor, so they brought them in. You know what I'm saying? It was yeah. not, and they did it the right way. They did it legally. Um, you know, we never really had a policy where just open the border and let people walk in. I mean, it's so absurd. I mean, if you think about it, and that's that's Joe Biden. I mean, it's just he 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 literally gave he he promised normalcy, and he gave the country to the most abnormal, politically abnormal people in the world, the far left. Right. Donald Trump is not politically abnormal. I mean, just policy wise, he's pretty moderate. You know, that's his strength. Right. The other, the, the, the strength, the, the, his weakness is himself. So this will be an interesting campaign. I think it's going to be close. I don't think there'll be a debate. I think th- th- that Biden can't debate. And now he's got the perfect guy not to debate. Just say, well, he didn't debate Nikki Haley. Why should I debate him? Right. right. You know, and that'll be, and it'll be, you know, thank God we have a constitution and we have Supreme Court justices that want to uphold the constitution because, you know, the founders, and again, I'm not a constitutional law expert, but I've done reading on this. The founders created a system where, you know, it shouldn't matter who's in office. You know, we have these rights, and these rights are to personal property, to, uh, you know, to you know, uh, equal before the law, which it was an uneven path for that, particularly for black people. I get it. But we but but we persevered through that to a point where there that those rights are inalienable and it shouldn't matter who's in office you know right. we do have a first amendment where we could criticize whoever's in office and i think that's what's great about this country is that there is a constitution and if you whenever you think it's bleak out there oh it's just joe biden and it's just donald trump remember there's right. also the constitution that protects you in, in a lot of ways yeah no, no no that's a good point you know it's it's funny charlie i, I keep thinking about the, the Democrats and Joe Biden at the top of that ticket. And it's so hard for me to imagine that to be the case, you know, that that, that come the actual November, that's going to be on the top of the ticket. Because I almost feel like I'd have to assume two things to be true. One, I'd have to assume that they're not power hungry as a party. And two, that they're stupid, right? And I don't think they're either, right? Because the polls show that, People just don't want Biden. I mean, let's let you know set aside Trump, but but to your point, the leap of faith you'd have to have to vote Biden in for another four years. I mean, and these Democrats, if there's any, I mean, if you look at the past four, there were like four polls this weekend, right? That said that Biden's just, I mean, no chance basically, and that Trump beats well, him. Well, I, I would say that I, I would say Trump's ahead, but you know they haven't started in on him. He's been kind of out of the news and. I think they look at it this way. I no. mean, they are they're they're completely power hungry. Listen, they put up John Fetterman or whatever his name right. was, Fetterman, the, 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 and the guy was barely alive at that right. point. He's better now, but still, 
you know, he gave you pause, and thank God he's better. I mean, we're not, we're not wishing harm on anybody. But here's the thing. Here's their calculus, my view. They don't have a good bench, no matter what you say. I mean, their, their best bench player would have been Andrew Cuomo, to be honest with you. But he had issues, and he right. had to resign as governor of New York over stupid stuff. By the way, the stuff that no court found him guilty of, if you, if right. you follow right. that story, which I have. Right. Um, uh, but still, he was their best shot. After that, the bench gets really weak. So then on top of that, you have to say, okay, can we get – so Biden – it would be nice if Biden had a better running mate because Kamala Harris is a lightweight. Well, because of identity politics in the, in the Democratic Party, you're not going to get rid of her. Nope. So you're kind of stuck with him and her, if you think about it, in right. many ways. And I've wrapped my head around this a lot. They're, there is not, they're the best that they have right now. If they're the best that they have right now, how do you win? And the only way you win is if you get Donald Trump at the head of the, if you, you pray or pull some shit like they did with all these indictments, these ridiculous, and then the Alvin Bragg indictment, which was dumb. Right. You, you, you get it by, by having people rally around possibly the worst national candidate the Republicans could put up, and that's Donald Trump. Um, it just optically and for all the reasons we talked about. So I think this is going according to the way they planned it. And by the way, again, they haven't started in on him yet. Right. We, we see, I mean, if you think about it, every day, what dominates the news? Uh, Joe Biden falling, Joe Biden stumbling, Joe Biden saying something stupid, the border. You know, what's going to start dominating is, okay, you sure you want that? Uh, I, I I would want that. I'm just saying, if, if you give me both choices, I'm, you know, just, I'm, uh, I, I, I generally, I just so you know, I don't vote, but if I, you were, to, I, I, I made that promise. I, I don't vote except for in lo- local elections. But, you know, if you're going to tell me, like, whose policies do you more align with? I obviously more align with Donald Trump's. Right. Uh, but a lot of people look through that and they're like, oh, we want this guy. He's, right, he's screaming and yelling. The other day he said, you know, black people like him because they've been to jail like he has. And then he said that. <laughs> then he said Then he said something about what he say about, like, I told him, I, I told Poland didn't want to pay their fair share. I can't imagine that. That's exactly how the, the, the NATO conversation went down. And then he said, well, I'm going to let Russia invade you. And I'm going to say, go ahead, do it. I mean, it's just, I, right. I think Everybody that's knows. how it went. But I mean, that's so that sort of dopey stuff is is like we're going to hear more of that. And yeah. eloquence is not his strong suit. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, n- no, he, he definitely isn't. Um, yeah, no, it's going to be really interesting to see how that goes down. Now, what about on the Senate side? It was kind of uh, great to see. um uh out in California, that uh, we have Garvey uh, getting a shift for rent for his money. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Although you know it is California, yeah. um, uh, you know the Senate should go to the Republicans. It's more the House, um, and that's one of the reasons why I think Haley dropped out. I mean, she was told by her donors to drop out because they want to redirect their money to the House and the Senate. Right. Um, so that's. That, that that put the, the pressure on her like get out now because we have to do this yeah you know and so that's kind of what's going that's the sort of brinkmanship that's going on there and you know listen if the Republicans get the Senate that you know that wouldn't be a bad thing because they can block judicial nominees right um the if they got the house in the Senate that would even if they lost the presidency it would be interesting um you know it, it would essentially make Joe Biden and Kamala Harris complete caretakers, at least right. for the next two years. I mean, st- strategically for the GOP, that makes a lot of sense to try to base, make sure they form a blockade to the White House, right? A Democrat yeah. White House. Yeah. And so that, but I, 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 I the, the odds makers are saying the Democrats pick up the House. Hmm. Um, and then, you know, there's also the Trump card on that. I mean, does, I mean, his preferred candidates don't do well. Right. You know they 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 underperform wickedly, and they have since 2016. Um, yeah, I mean th- th- that's definitely the case. I mean, you know, now just, here's here's something that yeah. we might want to uh, consider. It's it's and it's a possibility, a Democratic clean sweep and a wipeout of Republicans. What does that do to the GOP? 
Well, that would be a disaster for our country, first of all. But <laughs> right, it would be, but it would do something to the to the Republican Party. It might it, it might destroy the Republican Party. And you know, I don't think people are given that enough thought because it's it is a possibility. You know, because if Trump loses, right. If Trump loses, we probably have losses down, down ballot as well. We lose down ballot, and then you know, you know, optically he could be holding rallies, and I mean, I mean, this could get like really weird because he's weird, right? Right. I mean, I think. I think. And by the way, uh, your boss, your 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 the great Bernie Marcus, uh, when I interviewed him, and Bernie told me and this is when he wasn't and didn't have his mind made up. He said, "Well, I keep telling Donald." And I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but the, and you can hear Bernie say this to him. Um, you know, you talk to people like you're on the golf course. You know, you got to act present. I mean, this is what Bernie told him. I mean, it's just you know, simple stuff. Right. And, uh, and, and, you know, that is part of his problem. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I know he's pretty frank with him. He just goes, hey, Donald. <laughs> yeah. And so, by the way, uh, and Donald would listen to him because that's the type of stature Bernie brings to the table. But you, yeah. you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 that's true. I mean, that is a horrific thought, though, Charlie, that uh, a clean sweep by the Dems. I don't even want to think about that because, uh, well, then I'll have to find somebody else to live because <laughs> I can't even imagine our country uh, in, in, in the hands of Democrats with a clean sweep after what they've already done these past years. And by the way, years. Alfredo, there's no place else to live. I know. <laughs> I know. Charlie, before we let you go, tell us about your new book, um, Go Woke, Go Broke. When's it coming out? Tell us a little bit about it. Actually, before we go there, though, Elaine, really quickly, if you don't mind, Charlie, can we talk a little bit about uh, Powell and what we're doing with the interest rates this year? Yeah, my sources are telling me, and I, I wrote this two weeks ago in the Post, maybe three weeks ago, I can't remember. It goes, time goes so fast. Uh, it's, it's likely to be uh, a June rate cut of 25 basis points. He'll wait until, and then and then followed up by maybe a September a small. These these will be incremental things, uh, but he's laying the groundwork for that. I mean, it's pretty clear, and he's not doing it now. And right. he'll, he'll it looks like it'll be June. Tell us about your book. Okay, so you know it was interesting because the book started out as a book about Silicon Valley Bank, about how this bank failed because. It was so, and I covered it a lot. And we all, we all, and, and how it was like kind of a canary in the coal mine of how, you know, there's bigger, uh, you know, this bank, which was so obsessed with wokeness, took its eye off the ball and didn't understand risk management. And so in doing that, as I was putting it together, you know, I realized that there's a bigger book here. Actually, even after I pitched it, when I sat down with the, the prospective publishers, and uh, Hachette is publishing the book, um, Alex Pappas is, is the editor there. When I sat down with him, I said, you know, this is bigger. And he and he said, I love it. I mean, this is Budweiser, you know, Anheuser-Busch. This is Disney. This is BlackRock and Larry Fink. And I got all the sources because I've been covering this stuff for so long. Mm -hmm. And so what I wrote now, so Silicon Valley Bank in this in, in the book now is not even a chapter. It's literally a piece of, of a chapter. Hmm. And the book takes you through, you know, essentially where we are, where, where, where wokeness was, is, how we got there, how corporations became essentially so progressive in all their policies. What were the, what were the causes? And it starts, and then it talks about how it manifests itself through what went on at Target with with the with you know, gay you know something that's supposed to be good, inclusive gay pride, you know, a month of gay pride celebration right. that mixes that mixes children's clothing with transgender clothing. I mean, how did we get to something so perverse? Right, right. Um, and and how did Disney go so left? And how how did how did how does a, a beer company fall you know find a transgender right. influencer to to market their beer in some of the most I mean bizarre ways I mean that, that it was just so weird you couldn't even make it up you know what I'm saying right, right. 
Um, and and what I want, by the way, I show it's not just like some woke person at at, at, at Budweiser. I mean, this was. I mean, Anheuser Busch, which is an which is a division of InBev, a big beverage conglomerate, is strictly follows DEI protocols. And I get into that, and I talk to people there about that. Hmm. And then the last chapter is called "Woke is Finally Broken," and you get to where we are now, where there's the backlash, and yeah. Larry Fink is no longer advocating ESG, won't say the words, and. Disney is putting disclaimers in its stock in its stock disclosures that you know people might not like our politics and might hurt the stock price. And Bob right. Iger is now saying we got to be more we got to we got to you know sell stuff. We can't be political. And you know I just go through how this thing is starting to unravel. How DEI is in retreat, and that's how I wrote it. And you know, and I think every day I I I see news that kind of um, that. Oh, more, more or less, you know, backs up my, my general conclusion at the end. You know, the, the, the interesting thing is, and this is what I, why I, I think I wrote, why I thought I need, we needed to write this book is that, you know, the, the mainstream, I consider myself part of the mainstream media, but just, you know, I don't consider myself some conservative media. I, I, I'm just a reporter. But most of my colleagues wouldn't touch this thing. Hmm. It's sort of intellectually sort of not their cup of tea. Hmm. I thought it was it was a big enough story that someone had to journalistically, and that's what I did with this. It does have a point of view, but it's a journalistic, trust me, right. I've gone through with Disney, I've gone through with Dan Heiser, you know, yeah. talk to everybody. Yeah. Someone had to, to, to journalistically unpack how corporate America went there and why. Right. And hold them accountable, you know, and, you know, and, and, and write and do it in a way that's nuanced. For example, with Jamie Dimon who runs the biggest bank in the world, J.P. Morgan, our America's banker. During the height of the George Floyd um, riots, he visited a um, branch, a J.P. Morgan branch, Chase branch in uh, Mount Kisco, New York, hmm. and took a knee. Uh, you know, he was with all these employees and they all stood around and they all took a knee, right? Yeah. So at the time, we were like, because I was one of them, why is Jamie taking a knee? Is that in solidarity with Black Lives Matter? And which, you know, Black Lives Matter now is a lot more controversial than it was then. Sure, sure. Even though conservatives were pointing out that this is a, a radical group, this is a group that's Marxist, right. and this is a group that's like fomenting violence at, at times. Um. He they were like, no, nah, we're not going to comment on that. And so, I, I mean, they had no problem to leave the imp at least the impression, and I think they were confirming it that Jamie Dimon was in solidarity with Jeep, with Black Lives Matter. Right now, when you go back to them, and I point this out in the book, obviously, they tell you, oh no, no, he was just kneeling to fit inside the picture. Now they go on the record saying that. You know, I think that type of jerk, that type of context is needed because you know these guys are powerful. You sure. know what I'm saying? Sure. If they're gonna if they're gonna like sort of um you know contract out their corporate policy to some left wing DEI officer, which they often did, right, right. We have to be we, we should write about it and it should be part of the discussion and we should ask them why. Yeah. And and I go and I that's what I do in this book. Yeah, well, we're, we're, we are looking forward to it. When, when can we uh, expect to see it on uh, available? You know, they want to release it in August. You know, I was like talking about doing it now. And here's why they say August. We're, we're now going to be in election season to the, to the you know, with the conventions coming up. When the conventions right. are in the summer, right? June, June or July? Yeah, June, July, yeah. August, and, and August is right before the real, you know, what hits the fan with the election. Sure. So they think this is this is like the perfect time to sell a book like this when people are on the beach and they need a, like a, a a juicy beach read. Which trust me, if if you if you hate woke stuff, you're gonna find this very juicy. <laughs> yeah, no, we we can't wait to read it. Um, I can't wait to read the little cameo piece uh, on us. So uh... you're, you're in there about the, what do I? Ha I have the scene about you know, no mouse in our house. Oh, the no no mouse in my house campaign. Yes. Yeah. That was very well received. <laughs> and I do end the book with Bernie prophetically 
making some really prophetic remarks and uh you know and it was it was like my honor to get to interview him and i hope he's doing well and you know he's lived a great life and he still does great things and yeah. but i i ended it on bernie yeah no that's wonderful i mean it's uh I can't believe I've had the, uh, the fortune, uh, you know, the luck that I've had to be able to work with him and sing with Elaine. Uh, it's, it's really been an amazing honor to know a man like that. But I think you guys do a, a, a service here. We need to see, we need advocates for small business, for business community, for entrepreneurs. Yeah. And that's what you guys do. And I think, uh, wokeness is the opposite of entrepreneurial activity. And oh, I think 100%. that's. That's another part of the book one basically says it does everything to stamp out the individual. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it really does. Small businesses, especially as you know, Charlie, the past few years, you know, COVID and all that. I mean, they are, and now of course with inflation and all this other stuff, I mean, they are just getting hit left and right. I mean, you're, you're, you see it in there in, in New York city. I mean, your small businesses are just getting hammered. I mean, well, it's funny you say that because I had I went around and around with J.P. Morgan and Bank of America on this. They had special small during this. This occurred. This, start, this launched during the, the uh, in twenty twenty after George Floyd. And by the way, and as you know, small businesses were all hurt in twenty twenty. Right? They locked them down. You had to apply right. for the PPP programming. It was just not great. Yeah. But they had for small business, only for, for minority small businesses, these special loan programs. And I asked right. them, I said, I said, look, we're all kind of in this together. You know, we're all, we all got locked down. What is the intellectual rationale for giving a successful minority business extra money right. as opposed to some white dude that, that, yeah. Yeah. that, that doesn't have that benefit that he has? I mean, shouldn't this all be on need? I mean, you know, we're in. Yeah. Yeah, we're in the the storm, the eye of the storm. Then, yeah, and they. Yeah. By the way, they never. None of them had good answers to that. Just so you know, but that's in the book too. Oh no, no, that's. I mean, actually, and I remember that because we're very involved with uh, Secretary Mnuchin on the Paycheck Protection Program and stuff. I mean, that really was for all small businesses. I mean, it didn't matter, you know, black, white, yellow, green. I mean, it really should have been. And then that extra layer that they added at the end for just minorities, just blacks. Uh, I, I mean, crazy. It, it was absolutely, I mean, we had somebody on our team whose family had a small business that got rejected because basically we weren't black. Right. I mean, yeah, I and, mean, the whole, thing, really was, the whole thing was just, the whole thing was, was actually illegal if you think about it. Oh yeah. hundred percent. And, uh, but I'm, we're, we're not there now. We're in a different place now. And I think the book points that out and we're there because of people like you guys, Thank journalists you. that, that went out there and, and, and and by the way, Chris Rufo's and you know the people that expose this, yeah, um, you know, deserve, I mean, Elon Musk, you know, we're there because of people did expose this, and that's what's what's great about this country. It's why even if Democrats take every over everything, we still have the First Amendment. We can still talk about things and discuss and try to sway people's opinions. Yeah, if 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 I had if I had tried to do some of the things that I uh, I've said about Biden uh, in Russia, I don't think uh, I'd be around uh, much longer. <laughs> you'd, be one of those, you'd be one of those gulags. I think a, I a think so. Time. I think so. Yeah. Well, Charlie, I, I know you've got to run, but thank you so much for joining us and taking the time um, on Main Street Matters, America's small business megaphone. And thank you all for joining us and listening. Main Street Matters is part of the Salem Podcast Network. You can subscribe to the show at salempodcastnetwork.com. New episodes come out every Wednesday and Friday, and we'll see you real soon. 